Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be talking all about network attached storage. So a company by the name of Asus Tor got in contact with me a while ago because as it turns out, someone who works there actually watches this channel. They're a viewer of the channel, which I thought was really awesome. And they offered to send out their Locker Store 4 NAS for me to do a video on, but this is not gonna be a traditional review video. You guys know if you're a subscriber to this channel that I do all sorts of tech experiments here, usually involving old computers and hardware, and sometimes we try to make old technology work with new technology. We've done that pretty frequently on this channel, actually. And the folks over at Asus Tor know this, and that's why they sent this to me for the express purpose of me making a video trying to get this thing working with the Windows 98 PC. Yeah, we're gonna be trying to to set this thing up so we can access it from Windows 98, which I think is a perfect uh, subject for an MJD video. So huge thanks to Asus Tor for being so generous and uh, willing to send this out to me. So when you hear the name Asus Tor, you probably think of Asus or Asus, however you want to pronounce it. And there's good reason for that because Asus invested in this company and that is, I believe, how they got started. So the name Asus Tor is a combination of the word Asus and the word storage and they kind of put those two words together and you get Asus Tor. And you can probably tell from the name that they focus primarily on storage solutions. So they make a lot of network attached storage devices. This specific one here has a quad core Intel processor, four gigabytes of RAM, which you can up upgrade to eight gigabytes if you want, and it runs a Linux-based operating system called Asus Tor Data Master, or ADM. And it's got this really cool App Store-like interface called App Central that has just a ton of software in it because there's a lot you can do with this thing. You can use it as a file server, which is what we're gonna be doing in this video. You can use it as a backup solution, even in conjunction with cloud backup services. You could even use it as a Plex media server if you want, and that's one of the applications in the App Store. You can also do things like set up a, a self-hosted file storage server with something like OwnCloud. You could even run VirtualBox on this thing and literally use it to run VMs, which sounds like something right up my alley. So we may take a look at that in a future video, who knows? But today it's gonna be all about Windows 98. So let's open this thing up and uh, take a brief look at it, shall we? So inside the box, you've got the NAS itself, along with this little box that contains all of the accessories. Inside of this, you've got the power brick, the power cable, a couple bags of screws, and two ethernet cables, which is useful because this thing has two ethernet ports on the back, along with two USB ports, the power port, a Kensington lock, and it's got an HDMI port as well if you wanted to plug a monitor into it. And here is the NAS itself. So you know what goes great with a network attached storage device like this? Uh, hard drives, because you literally need them to be able to use the thing. Now we could boot this up and take a look at the operating system on it, but you're not really going to be able to use it to store anything without any hard drives. So I actually didn't have any NAS hard drives or just any hard drives I could use with this at all. So Asus Tor got in touch with Seagate and Seagate offered to send out not one, not two, not three, but four 12 terabyte Iron Wolf NAS hard drives in what is probably the most bizarre video that they've ever contributed to because normally hard drive manufacturers like Seagate will send out hard drives to YouTubers to do build guides with or to do something with modern hardware, which this is with modern hardware. We are gonna be putting these things in this NAS, but we're gonna be using the thing with Windows 98 just for the fun of it, which is a common theme with these videos, but like it's not your typical uh, use case for 48 terabytes worth of storage. So huge thanks to Seagate and Asus Tor for being so willing to send all this stuff out to me. I really, really appreciate it. And guys, if by the end of this video you're interested in buying any of this stuff, links will be down below in the video description. So let's go ahead and use the included screws that came with the NAS to get these drives put into it. Thank you. 
So everything was pretty straightforward. I got the hard drives installed in the NAS, plugged it in, and turned it on. And when I turned it on, the very first thing it asked me to do once it uh, finished booting up was to initialize the NAS. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can do it from the NAS itself, you can do it from a web browser on another computer, or you can do it via the mobile app. I just ended up doing it from the NAS itself because it was the most convenient, but when you do it this way, it sets up, if you have three or more hard drives installed, it will set those drives up in a RAID 5 configuration, which is what it did here since I have four drives, which is totally fine by me. If you have two hard drives, it will set them up in a RAID 1 configuration. What you're looking at right now is the web portal itself. It's a very straightforward interface. You've got a couple of app icons here and yeah, so the first thing I want to show you is the App Central. So this is that kind of app store that I was talking about. And you've got, uh, like I said, a plethora of applications in here. You've got Plex Media Server, Iron Wolf Health Management, which is useful since the drives that Seagate sent me are Iron Wolf NAS hard drives. Now you probably saw Firefox here. Now this is because, again, since this is running a Linux operating system, you can use this as a Linux box if you want to. So installing Firefox requires uh, installing Xorg, which is a implementation of the X Windows system, which is available through the App Central as well. I can do a search for it here and uh, you can see that we have it installed. So if you wanted to remote into this and use it as a Linux computer, you can absolutely do that. Now, the main reason I'm showing you this interface is so you can see the process you would have to go through if you wanted to get this in NAS to be able to be seen by Windows 98. So if you go to services here and go to Windows, you wanna make sure that the minimum protocol for Windows file service is set to SMB1 and SMB signing is set to default. Now, in my case, and I would assume your case as well, these were the default settings, but if they happen to not be, you would have to change them. But if you're using this NAS uh, with more modern systems as you typically would be, I would recommend changing this to SMB2 because SMB1 has been proven to be insecure. So we're gonna hit apply even though no settings were changed. And now we're gonna head on over to the $5 Windows 98 PC and uh, get everything set up from there. Now, before we could get everything up and running, I had to install a patch via the Windows 98 Unofficial Service Pack 3. Now, this is a pretty interesting uh, collection of tweaks and patches for Windows 98. It's even got things like Tweak UI in here, and uh, it could be something that we could cover in a future video, so be sure to let me know if you guys wanna see that. But yeah, there was uh, there's one patch in here that we had to apply to the system for everything here to work properly. Without it, I wasn't able to get anything to work. So I'll have a download link to this down below if you'd like to go and check it out if you happen to be doing this yourself. But once, it once we installed this, it was just a quick restart and we were back in business. All right, so we've logged back into the 98 PC and we've got that patch patch installed, but as you're going to see momentarily here, we're still not going to be able to access the NAS just yet. So I can go to run here and I've got the, this is the NAS's IP address here, 10.50.227.133. And let's say the folder I want to access is called home. So we're going to press enter and it'll come up and ask you for a password. Now what's interesting is there isn't really, I mean, there's a username and password for the NAS, but even if you try to type in that password in here, which in this case is admin, which is just the default password, the default username and password, by the way, is admin and admin. You can type that in and it's not going to connect. It'll say an extended error has occurred. Now, the reason for this is uh, under Windows 98, you have to log in with the same username and password as the NAS. Enter your network password for Microsoft networking. If we type in the username and password for the NAS into here, so admin and admin and press enter, it'll log us in and bring us back to the Windows 98 desktop. It should momentarily here. And now if we go to run and type in that same IP address and we'll even add slash home and press enter, we'll be able to access it just fine. Now you could use any account. So like I actually created a, another user account on the NAS. Uh, I could use that to log in as well. In fact, I just did that off camera and it works totally fine. But you have to use the same username and password that you would use to log into the NAS's web portal. But here we are and you can see that I've got two folders here. We've got updates, tools and drivers and windows. 
And these two files over here, I believe, pertain to the system update that I did uh, when the NAS turned on for the first time. It asked me to, you know, it said there was a new operating system version available, so I had it update. And that's what these files most likely relate to, so they can probably be deleted, but I'll just leave them there for now. But yeah, I've got these two folders here that I copied over from my main computer. Uh, updates, tools, and drivers just contains updates, tools, and drivers. So I've got all sorts of stuff in here. And you can see most of these files are .iso files and .zip files. Uh, so we're not gonna be able to open those with Windows 98 here, but uh, at least right now. But I've got all sorts of uh, stuff in here that I just acquired over the years and uh, I use occasionally in videos. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff for virtual machines, like certain update packages. And I've got like Windows 7 Service Pack 1 here. Um, so yeah, there's all sorts of stuff in here. And that's one of the things that this NAS could really come in handy for is uh, storing my archive of old software. Because right now I just use a drive in my computer, but I can't access that on other computers. I mean, I could if I want to enable SMB1 file sharing on my main Windows 10 computer, which I certainly don't want to do because again, that protocol is insecure. Uh, and that kind of goes without saying here, this is really just for demonstration purposes here. I would not really recommend using SMB1 uh, using that protocol even on this NAS here because it is an insecure protocol but there are other file sharing protocols that this NAS supports you've got WebDAV, you've got FTP I could use this as an FTP server if I want to and we might be diving into those options in a future video if you guys would like to see that because I do want to get this thing set up to have a secure file server that I can access from modern computers and vintage computers like the 98 PC here but I think that SMB1 just to kind of you know show that this is possible is totally fine for this demo here. So this Windows folder here is not from a Windows installation. This is just what I use to store my uh, various copies of Windows. I have from Windows 1.0 all the way up to Windows 10. Now the reason why I've got these numbers here in front of what would be the, the, the entire folder name is so that in Windows 10 it will sort these by, like I just have it sort by name so that I can get Windows 1 at the top and then have it count all the way up to Windows 10 essentially at the bottom. Now Windows 10 knows that 10 is larger than 2, right? But Windows 98 here, it perceives the number 10 as just 1, 0, which is 1 above 1, right? So that's why number 2 is, is right here. But yeah, there you go. And I mean, I can totally copy stuff over to here. In fact, why don't we copy? Let's just make a new text document on the desktop. And we'll copy that over to uh, the NAS. And there you go. So now I could access this file uh, from any computer on the network, just as long as it's well able to access the NAS. Now, one of the nice things we can do, and you would definitely want to do this if you were using this thing very frequently, instead of having to constantly open up a run and just type in the IP address, we can map a network drive. So we can do that by right clicking on my computer and go to map network drive. And let's say I want to use uh, the G drive here. And we'll type in the path. So again, it's going to be 192.168.1. Uh, oh, wow, I'm way off. I'm so used to typing 192.168 for everything. 10.50.227.133 slash home. Press OK. And there we go. So now if we go into my computer, you'll see that we have the NAS mapped as the G drive, which gives us very, very easy access to it. And if we want to, you know, now we could go to run type in G colon, and there we go. So it's just very, very, very easy access. Now you probably saw, and this is one of the side effects of using Windows 98, uh, Windows 98 doesn't really know how to comprehend any file size larger than two terabytes. So even though this is like a 33 terabyte, I mean, again, this is uh, configured in RAID 5, my Windows 10 machine sees this as a 33 terabyte drive. Windows 98 only sees it as a 1.96 terabyte drive, which is not true. There's way more, you know, free space on this drive, but Windows 98 doesn't really know how to comprehend anything larger than that, at least with network drives here. So that's just what it shows. So it would be interesting to see what would happen if like, say I had two terabytes worth of data on this drive, how Windows 98 would behave. Like, would it allow me to copy 
stuff over to it if Windows is seeing the drive as full. That would be interesting, though I would need to <laughs> I have to spend some time coming up with two terabytes worth of data to copy over to this. But yeah, that's really how simple it is uh, to, to do this, guys, at least with the SMB1 protocol, which again is insecure, and I would not really recommend using this in a production environment. But these are the kind of questions that I like to answer on this channel. And like I said, that is the main reason why Asus Tor got in contact with me. In fact, the person who emailed me told me that he has a similar setup in his office. He's got an old Windows 98 computer set up uh, to his network attached storage device, which when I heard that, I was like, okay, this is really cool. And it would absolutely be be really, really neat to feature on video because this is just up this channel's alley. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And again, huge thank you to Asus Tor and Seagate for being so generous and willing to send all this stuff out to me. I really appreciate it. And guys, if any of the use cases that I talked about uh, in this video, any of the things you can use this NAS for sound interesting to you, be sure to drop a comment down below because there's a lot of video making possibility with this thing and I mean I, I do want to try it out and actually set it up on my home network and you know use it as like a backup solution and as a file server and possibly a Plex server there's a lot of things I would like to do with this but I think that running virtual machines on this thing would be cool I mean there's just like I said there's so much we can do with this and uh, uh, there's just yeah lots of lots of video making potential so if any of those things sound interesting to you be sure to let me know but uh, as for now that's going to wrap it up for today's episode i want to thank you all so much for watching if you enjoyed this one be sure to give it a thumbs up be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever i upload a new video which i do multiple times every single week on this channel and as always i will see you guys in the next video